So just a couple of uh, points of kind of what we assume that you uh, know going into this. Um, one, you know, that you have uh, some interest uh, in a process that uh, reflects a customer journey, that you have a need for personalization within your solution. So where that journey can be customized uh, uh, in a more personal way, that that's gonna yield some benefit. And you're looking to sell or convert uh, these journeys into uh, meaningful things. So the, the agenda, uh, what we're gonna cover is kind of a brief background on MC Plus A, our, uh, our partner on LucidWorks. Uh, we'll dive a, a little into the, uh, our position in, in the marketplace, where our feelings uh, and our perspective. And then uh, we'll wrap up with kind of what, uh, how, you, how you go about implementing. So it's one thing to say machine learning, but what are specific things uh, and features that yield the improvements in uh, conversion rates, improvements in uh, total cart value, et cetera. So kind of why should you care? You know, it's pretty simple. So uh, customers' uh, expectations are, are changing. They're uh, expecting uh, to see things more personal. They understand that computers have this uh, notion of what uh, about them and that uh, each individual uh, community that's going to your application, your app, your site, they have uh, different needs based on geographic locations. Uh, for example, and they want those things to be taken into consideration for uh, the experience. The uh, but as a group, uh, you know, we aren't uh, delivering that. Um, there are, uh, and so, you know, Forrester uh, did a survey and found that um, a significant number uh, of users think that their experiences could be. Uh, specifically with retailers, um, could be more personalized. And we'll, this is a topic that will, if you talk to us at all, you know, is that we, we do li live in a consumer-oriented uh, world. So the application that you're developing, even if it's a B2B experience, even if it's internal, it's going to or should be influenced by uh, consumer trends. Another... Uh, uh, note from McKinsey, you know, while we think we're doing a lot, you know, there's uh, a lack of uh, taking an omni-channel experience, um, you know, into play uh, regardless of the device or the, the footprint that uh, you're, you're exposing to. And this all ultimately leads to uh, another, we, we worked a lot with Google uh, in the past, uh, and Google set the, the, the expectation of what search would, would be like and we would go to customers who tried to implement their own experience and we would really just have to have watershed moments with them to drive them back to a more common uh, experience based on the type of application that they're doing. And in the same way, Amazon, Walmart, uh, and these companies have established what uh, search should look like, which, what personalization should look like uh, with, uh, within the, um, uh, the space. And you know, therefore, that's the, the bar. It's a very difficult bar to, uh, to compete against. And so your goal should be uh, how to leverage uh, an experience um, more towards what your users are looking for rather than trying to compete head to head with like what Amazon can do. Um, whether you're selling parts, you're looking at automotive, uh, aftermarket, et cetera. And now we'll kind of dive into some of the uh, uh, market uh, conditions and market realities. So, and, and uh, the, as always, the simplest background about us. So MC Plus A, you know, kind of why, why listen to us is this is all we really focus on. 
you know, having hundreds of implementations, working with the top inside engines in, in the marketplace, working with some of the top brands uh, and companies in the world. Uh, we have a um, uh, kind of an opinion and a process to uh, try to take this very te technical, uh, this, this very technical information process and simplify it as, uh, in, in a way. The, uh, you know, just in general, our goal is to make very technical things simple and boring. How do we do that? Um, we do it through a prescriptive approach. And there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, we like this design um, It kind of expresses a typical project where the wavy, waviness on the left side is, is smoothed out through the process of the project. But it's a typical, you know, five phase um, waterfall. Uh, although, you know, we can do uh, things in an iterative way. So diving into the product catalog considerations, um, you know, there are unique there is uniqueness to this uh, that is different than a typical uh, uh, search experience. Um, one of our beliefs is in search, in search analytics, the customers are telling you exactly what they're looking for and our ability to interpret them and provide them highly relevant uh, related matters or recommendations is the uh, utmost to, to goal for, for what we're trying to do. Because uh, on the e-commerce side um, or the, the B2C space, you know, the, the customers can just drift away. And in the same sense, in the B2B space, the, the ability to effectively show the right product, the right, uh, right item to that uh, user uh, will have improvements in uh, conversion rates. We've seen uh, going from out of the box search, uh, converting at two, 3% to uh, without search to converting to 9% with search. And so you could take your uh, average revenue and uh, figure out how significant that could be to your bottom line, because uh, depending on what it is, they're going to they're going to go somewhere to to get the information. They're going to go to one of your competitors. They're going to call into a channel that is more expensive for you, potentially uh, on the phone or through chat, uh, to find that product. So if you can find and source them the right product, the right part, uh, it's just much better in in, in general. So. In essence, for everything that, that you should do, you should focus on outcomes. So uh, you know, Peter Drucker, if it's worth building, it's worth measuring, uh, very much applies here. And the signals that uh, we capture for the analytics are what drive a lot of the machine learning uh, algorithms. So the more uh, signal data that, that we get, the better it is for uh, some of the algorithms. And then ultimately to justify uh, the investment or the expansion of the investment uh, going forward. Another uh, um, key point, and we, we show this a lot of times in our sales demonstrations, is the internal nomenclature, the internal organization being reflected externally. Um, there's an example we have a uh, one of our uh, customers that they have four search boxes, literally four search boxes on, on their website. And lo and behold, there are four data groups within the organization. And there's simply no need for that. You know, what they're doing is they're showing their internal organizational structure to an end user and end users just don't care. They want to come and they want to put a band, they want to put an uh, interchange code in and find the part of the product that they're looking for. Uh, this is an example that the, uh, um, kind of using Volkswagen um, model codes uh, to brand names. So the customers are going to say Touring, they're not going to say, you know, an SL0, um, which would be a specific uh, Volkswagen model in this case. And then going again into the more of the product catalog. So you have a catalog, and depending on the uh, nature of the market that you're, ser you're serving, uh, you have data feeds from a variety of manufacturers. The manufacturer's SKUs are different. The content is different. It makes it very difficult to uh, normalize and clean up the uh, 
notion of fitment. So does this part or product fit the application that I'm trying to use it for? Or does it fit the vehicle that I'm trying to mount it? Does it fit the, uh, what I own? Um, because there's a lot of uh, ambiguities uh, uh, externally, but internally, you know, there's a specific application for, the, for that. Uh, and then when you deal with the aftermarket side, there's what is OEM and then what is the aftermarket. So there's an original um, brake pad, but there could be four different variations of it on the, uh, on the after, aftermarket side. So like we say, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, there's uh, a lot of companies trying to solve these problems, but you know, most companies aren't going to uh, develop themselves a database uh, from scratch. They're not gonna develop a web server from scratch or an email server from scratch. They're going to use uh, out of the box technology and customize it. And uh, what we've done at MC Plus A is partner with some of the, the best companies in the world who specialize in this and LucidWorks in this case uh, is our de facto leader in, in this space uh, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, LucidWorks over the next couple of slides but uh, with this platform we're able to provide a hyper personalized experience uh, and it comes with all the building blocks that you need to do that. LucidWorks is uh, a Gardner Magic Quadrant leader. Um, so they, year over year, uh, they have uh, improved the most in this. And so as you move to left and as you move to the top, uh, that's more recognition from Gardner in, in the space. And then this is uh, about insight. This uh, scoring is done by Insight Engines in general, but specifically within product catalog or structured data, uh, e-commerce, uh, they are uh, far and ahead above uh, anyone else in, in this. And so as we, we talk a little bit about using uh, LucidWorks to do product catalog search, we're really looking at um, three facets. One, um, the, the search that's performed, two, the, the browsing experience, and three, how do we curate or uh, administrate uh, that to surface up certain things as a manager. And probably that piece we'll talk the least about. We'll talk more about the search and the browsing experience because that's a little bit more end user focused. And so in the, in the, search, uh, the search challenge is one, how do you create a, a compelling user interface? The, uh, which is ultimately, uh, a expression of relevancy. We would like to talk about the difference between Bing search and Google search. If you abstract away the user interface, they score similarly uh, on relevancy tests. But uh, Google has spent a lot more time uh, and trained their users into using its system uh, and is, is, has more of a, a fuzzy, warm fuzzy effect uh, on how people interpret their um, uh, their relevancy. But really what, what we're looking at in terms of a, a couple of key features is, you know, can we get uh, improved click-through rates? Uh, can we uh, use machine learning to uh, affect the results and affect what is displayed to the end user? And are we improving on our metrics. So are we able to convert more users? Are we able to make the basket sizes larger? Are we able to repeat customers um, frequently? So I think with that, we'll kind of talk a little bit about how, um, how we get there. What are specific things that you could be doing? What are specific uh, features that drive this next generation experience? Um, and one that uh, comes out of the box with lucid work is head to tail analysis. And so this is the process by which we look at the search terms that are provided and begin to understand what people were looking for. So in this case, we're looking at uh, the, the head and the tails is that hockey stick graph of 
your search term, search frequency, density. So a lot of search terms are similar. And then that's the head and as the hockey stick flattens out, the tail is all these derivative search terms, model codes, uh, skews, one-off skews, incorrectly formed skews that, that, that yield results. And in this, the, the tool looks at those and then starts to build up uh, synonym lists and uh, uh, those start to drive the autocomplete query. So, you know, you can have an autocomplete uh, experience that not only shows you suggested keywords, but that it could suggest things that aren't in your index or have not been um, queried. One example that I really like showing is, is uh, this is off of uh, Granger's website, uh, but that people don't know what they don't know. And where we can suggest categories for information, it, it's, it's a search to browse experience. So I don't know that you put this product in this category. Um, and so, but I think that categories from a broad sense is what I'm looking for. And so in this case, we're suggesting, uh, or there are suggestions based on the, uh, the categorization, the category. And here's, here's another uh, example. So um, you can see that all of the, the um, search of a break path, all of the suggestions are actually searches with a category. Uh, and that allows, uh, you know, refinement. So it's a lot easier to, to pick the, uh, uh, the winner if the uh, set that you're looking for is, is reduced. There's a lot of talk about NLP. Now, NLP is, uh, is natural language processing, and there's two sides of it. One, putting structure to your content, and then two, uh, understanding, interpreting, query intent. The, on the indexing side, it's not as important, um, but most of these techniques that I'll talk about uh, do uh, can can be applied, but since the product catalog is fairly structured, um, there isn't as much of a need to go and tag what uh, what item it is because you you want to have that in, in your database. But in this case, kind of keeping with the Volks, Volkswagen theme, you know, we took uh, the query 2014 Jetta brake pads, and the system is going to identify that. Uh, 2014 is a model year, uh, Jetta is a model or, or a brand, and then this, the search is for uh, a brake pad. And so kind of going back to that uh, analogy of, of where uh, you have multiple search boxes because this is a VIN search, this is an interchange code. We can literally detect that you're typing in a VIN, and if it's the only token, we can perform a specific search based on that. Uh, and so that's the whole idea of query intent. So it's like, oh, we, we understand that you're looking for uh, a, a VIN and we can sh source you pro uh, products that are specific to the VIN because we know what, what your make model is based on the VIN. And here, what we would do is we can take the, so the user types in 2014, Volkswagen Jetta, and bang, we've pre-filtered the, the search results based explicitly on that uh, to start the experience. And then the user can then, of course, go through and, and, and query it, but these are uh, platform capabilities. We've, we've interpreted what the, uh, what the intent of the user is, structured the query specifically for that, and uh, issued it. There's a lot of talk about learn to rank, and this goes back into the signals that we track. So if you have the signals to uh, understand what people are searching for, what they click on, where they go. You can start to build up recommend, uh, two things, recommendation models. So if this, then that. Um, but also you can reorder the result set. And so uh, the, and this, is a, this isn't an aftermarket uh, uh, example, but uh, you should, should provide you the, the idea. You know, if you just look at term frequency uh, in the standard search um, case, uh, this, in this example, everything's about an iPad. Um, but over time and through the, the machine learning aspect, 
uh, we can train a model and create a uh, boosting relative to to where those these items would land naturally in the result set. And uh, now, when you do a search for iPad, the the actual iPad products show up first. They are the uh, the ones that people are buying or clicking, and that, and they have the most relevancy to the specific user. You could do this, of course, with um, the levers that come with a, a traditional search system. But what you can do is personalize it to the nth degree. So going back to uh, previous uh, examples, so if you bought a, a, a CMS or maybe you have a merchandising system, you're you're starting to create buckets. And so you'll say, okay, buckets from people in North America, buckets of people who have a particular type of vehicle. What machine learning can do for you is to create n number of buckets. So you're not sitting there predictively or ahead of time trying to understand what the buckets are that you need to come up with, that the system is going to be able to give you the omnipersonal experience based on similar people in as many and categories or buckets is, is can be defined. Other examples of personalization of the uh, experience are uh, classification and clustering. So this is the opportunity to cross sell, upsell, uh, show related products of people who um, looked at this, ultimately bought something else, and you can start to guide them uh, in relative uh, content. These are all using the same um, techniques. It's just a matter of how you uh, employ, employ them uh, through, the, um, through the experience. And then lastly, like I said the, uh, uh, this is all really driven through analytics. Uh, there's an extensive uh, admin tool that allows you to make the uh, uh, to curate the the lists and the uh, boosts etc um, that that you aren't uh, leaving to uh, machine learning uh, we can certainly take you take you through those uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis but uh, it goes back to having the the analytics um, in place and just go straight into the uh, Q and A. So, if you have any any additional questions, um, we'd be happy to uh, take them. We've got a couple here already. Uh, one sec. Okay. So, one question number one. We have a lot of products. Is this licensed by Doc Count? How is this priced? That's a good question. So. Uh, it's always it depends a little but this is not licensed by dot count so there's um it's, it is consumption based based on uh, a variety of factors and that's important because uh product catalogs can can uh, tend to be in the, the millions and then when you add fitments uh you know you, you can really explode the, the dot counts this isn't something that's that's priced by um uh, uh dot count another question uh how long does it take uh, to implement this? Uh, so we typically say about three months, uh, start to finish uh, for the initial implementation. And then the process of signal tuning, tracking is ongoing. So that, um, that's uh, uh, something that uh, it takes as long as it takes, I guess. Now, which of these features should I prioritize? So I think the, the one that if I was going to, I mean, I guess the, the two that I would look at are the autocomplete and the learn to rank. Um, learn to rank being the one that um, is uh, most important to all of your searches. Uh, and the uh, autocomplete is the one to, uh, I think, is the starting point for, uh, for your searches. Is that a question? Uh, what's the best approach? Um, yeah, so the, the best approach is to uh, start small uh, and iterate. Uh, so try not to do big bang, try not to uh, use feelings or uh, past 
uh, past experiences to, uh, as much as you, you might, because uh, we really want to get our people who are successful are, are using analytics uh, and creating scenarios where they can really discern um, what the cause was. So if, if, you're, if you create a uh, recommendation or, uh, or some type of boost that you can understand its effectiveness in the answer. So it's not three things that could have caused that. So where you can narrow it down to a single, a single um, uh, 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 attribute, that's, that's the best and uh, experiment. Okay, I think that's the uh, last uh, question. If anyone has any others, uh, drop it in now or just shoot uh, an email to us and we'll, we'll get that uh, answered. As I said, this will be uh, uh, released for uh, download uh, in a couple of days. And thanks everyone for uh, joining. Have a great uh, rest of your day.